Just a friendly reminder that the opinions expressed on this show are not worth a Canadian penny, so disregard anything you hear that might get anyone in trouble. And despite some of the great ideas you may hear, don't try them at home. Go to friend's house instead. It's time to get a gun. That's what I've been thinking. Well, I could afford one. If I did just a little less drinking, time to put something between me and the sun. When the talking is over, it's time to get a gun. Welcome to Slam Fire Radio, episode 543, recording live on Wednesday, February 7th. I'm one of your hosts, Mo. Hey, I'm another host, Kelly. Hey, I'm another host, Adriel. And hey, that's all the hosts. And hey. For today. For, for today. today. Mm-hmm. Kyle's been hard at work, though. He's been editing videos and publishing them to our YouTube channel. So if you want to see those, check those out. You know what I should do? What? I should what? rip some of those and upload them. You know what? You should really do that. You should do that. Mm. Right? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. This is awesome. All I see is like people frozen and choppy video and choppy voices. So am I choppy? Yeah. No, actually, no. your video looks fantastic right now, but it wasn't <laughs> earlier. Okay. Hi, Russ. Hi, All Russ. Right. We can get uh, started. Let's start with Kelly's God. So let's start with Adriel. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. I'm in. Put me in, coach. I'm ready to talk. You're in. Uh, I put out a video on cheap ammo for 2024, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Okay. That there cheap ammo, where to get it and whatnot. I saw it. It was some uh, of your best work. It was uh, a mail-in, uh, but uh, a, a buddy of mine just got an SKS and he was sending me some different prices of 760 by 39. I was like, oh, you know what I should do? I should do my cheap ammo thing again because it's been about a year since I did it last. So, yeah. Yep. Updated the spreadsheet. All right. I have to ask. Uh-huh. Has there been changes? Significant changes? Uh, yeah. In pricing. Mm-hmm. Down? Yeah. Yeah. What about availability? Uh, well, it's pretty available right now. I, tw- yeah. 22 is a lot cheaper. I, I didn't do the 22 in the video. I just did like center fire stuff, but, uh, That's what I'm 22 wondering. is much more available and cheaper than last year. It's not as cheap as I think it should be, but it's pretty Correct. cheap mm-hmm. and yeah. a, a more available, more available. I'll say, okay. I don't really like that. Uh, it's weird because for 22 ammo right now, bulk, like garbage bulk is like right around eight, nine cents around. And good bulk is right around eight or nine cents around. I don't know why people are buying Thunderbolt right now when it's like eight cents around at the cheapest. It was really <clears> like <throat> if it when it was four cents, okay, yeah, you know, four cents is a lot less. So you, you get the get the the Thunderbolt or the Wildcat or something like that. But right now it's all it's all like right around eight cents. So well, yeah, and some twenty two is cheap and available. Some stuff we're we're still not seeing. Um, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, stuff I like we're not seeing. There's some Aguila out there. It there comes and some. goes. Comes and I goes. A, yeah. I have a couple of bricks. That's mm-hmm. better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think um, for the new shooters out there, uh, mm-hmm. when you find ammo cheap, you buy uh, you buy lots of it, and then you stack it like this. Correct. You put it in a gun room and stack it, or you lock it up and, and put it somewhere safe. But you know what I'm you know what I'm doing? I found some mm-hmm. really good ammo, and I've locked it up and kept it and I won't shoot it because <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> I don't want to run out of it. Well, I won't run out of it if I don't shoot it. That's another issue entirely. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that's no longer uh, buying it cheap and using it. That's the hoarding. That's called, you're, you're hoarding. That's called hoarding. Yeah, yeah. It's hoarding. Yeah. That's hoarding. called hoarding. Yeah. Am I hoarding? Yes. I think, so. I think yeah, I should probably... <laughs> Should probably sell some stuff. I have ammo that I have no guns for. I have a 38, 357, and 4570 in one of those. I don't have any guns like to buy that that. right now. No. Because I'll have it again at some point. Uh, It won't be that long. I'll have a a 4570. I was looking at a center. I'll 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 wait for the new gun stuff, but uh oh (laughs) I'll I'll door that open mysteriously. I gotta go. There's dogs barking, there's dogs opening doors. I gotta go yell at my dog. It's (laughs) barking in the yard. (laughs) 
Yeah, next he'll uh, he'll start cleaning the SKS. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I hit the, I hit the range. Uh, I hit the range. Uh, took my SKS, my Mosin, my, my couple of my red rifles. The SKS is so much fun. Like I, I uh, it was it was one of my it was one of my first gun. My first gun it was the first gun I bought uh, after I got my pal, and I still love them. I still love SKSs. They sh- they go bang every time. I was shooting at two hundred, and I, I was hitting a, a steel plate. Yay big every time 200 yards just over and over and over again boring almost there so wasn't it wasn't a minus 30 or 40 day was it minus 10 oh okay yeah not bad not bad okay uh you were and then, still played every time how'd that happen with an sks uh okay well my sks isn't really factory anymore i've got the oh. uh tech sites on it so it's got like the you know peep back and it's way at the back of the receiver uh, so that makes it a quite a bit easier to get like that alignment, like yeah. dead, dead center. And my trigger has had a little bit of work to it too. So it is pretty light and mm. uh, yeah, it's nice. Yeah. There you go. Uh, and I took my GSG and my youngest son and he loved it. It really? did not fail once. And we ran through another 300 rounds and uh, yeah, didn't fail once. I don't know once. what you're he- doing because... It's not, not taking failing. care of it. It's not oiling it's, it. <laughs> it's not failing for you. What are you doing? <laughs> I don't know. Lucky. Maybe I got a good one. That'd be nice yeah. to think. Hey, I got a good one. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. But like he had a like, so I just have a red dot on it. It's just up there. Uh, he he. I've got a red dot on it. Not a particularly good red dot, but uh, it's, oh man, it's so much fun to shoot. Because at, at you know 50, what? you could steal and just and just just wail away on it. All right, fine. I'm going to say it. It's a <laughs> it's fun little plinking gun. It is. It really, mm-hmm. really is. But if you're looking for um, the trifecta of accuracy, you know, economy yeah, I, and reliability and reliability, you're not going to get that with the GSG. Correct. It is yep. fun though to shoot. I acknowledge that. I will acknowledge. And it's that. light. And it is That's light. That's yeah. the other thing he liked about it. It's light. Uh, he can compress yeah, the stock a little bit, so so he yeah. can keep it like right in close. Uh, yeah. He likes the the gimmicky like mag in the butt stock thing. Yeah. Like he fired off his first mag, dumped that one, grabbed the other one from his armpit, load the next one up, and keep going. And he's pretty quick mm. at it. So he, uh, I think he's gonna have a good time shooting uh, whatever steel challenge or three gun or whatever with it. He's cool. Have a good time. Um. I organized my gun room a bit. Oh, I gotta, sh- I gotta show it off. Look at this. The shelf probably looks like crap to everyone out there, but uh, it's ac- actually organized. Wow, so, looks look good. That. It took me like two hours. <laughs> it was a, it was a disaster. Uh, yeah, you get to the point where you're just stacking stuff, and you get back from the range. You're like, I need to use my range bin, so you throw everything in that. Yeah, it got, it got pretty bad. So. It's uh, it's back yeah. to a, a much better place now, and now I have like a lot more room that I don't even know what to do with. I'm sure I'll figure something else. I will send you stuff. <laughs> no, I'm sending you stuff. No, I'm waiting for sling- you send me slings, the broken ones. I need okay. to send mine mine back to you. I got a bin oh. full of slings, uh, mag pouches, and oh, where's my example here? The little like pushover thing that if you get a Ruger 1022 that doesn't have the front sling swivel. This thing yeah, just yeah. slides oh, on. Yeah, 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 yeah. I should. printed a bunch of those. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, why don't you show it to everybody? Do you have a, want a copy of it? Uh, I, the people watching no. might might want to have a look at it because I'll I'll yeah, show what? like after I I've got another one uh, upstairs. Okay. I'll just I'll grab it uh, while someone else is talking. But uh, yeah, it's three D uh, printed. What else? People can do it. Mm-hmm. It's a three D printer. The model is not out there, though. I got the model from uh, an American, and uh, it's not shared. It's not shared. Hmm. It's not published. No. Nope. What if they contacted you? Uh, I, okay. Okay. I'm mm-hmm. just saying. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I would say, like, if it was my gun, I would never do anything. I would uh, buy a little screw in sling swivel stud and i'd screw it into the stock which i've done to a ton of these guns yeah i don't yeah yeah common uh i missed a maple seed meeting that uh i didn't really yeah. schedule it but i kind of scheduled it i did schedule it so it. adriel scheduled a meeting 
<laughs> I reminded for, everyone about it too. For everybody and said, reminder, we have a meeting uh-huh. um, this Monday night and mm-hmm. scheduled it, but it, uh-huh. we, we weren't supposed to start our meetings till March. And I said, ah, we scheduled it. Well, come on. Guess who doesn't show up? Oh no. <laughs> no shows. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's going, where's Adriel? I went, Meh, I don't know. <laughs> Excuse me. But uh, so guess happy. what happens when somebody doesn't show up? What? They get volunteered for the next thing. Uh, mm-hmm. so I'm okay know. with that though. I do the start the first of the year and then I don't have to worry about it again. Yeah, Love it. Right. No problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that, and then I was at a client meeting, uh, kind of towards the end of the day. It was like, and I was looking at the time. I was like, oh man, I don't want to drive at four thirty. I'm going to be like stuck in traffic. So uh, I realized I was next to Phoenix Gun Range, so I went over there and I ran into all kinds of people that I knew over there. Ran into some three gunners. Ran into some uh, precision shooters. Talked to some guys about the pal courses I'm doing, and talked to some guys about yeah, all sorts of stuff. So that was. Excellent. Uh, and then I got here and drove straight from there to here and then got onto this call as soon as I could. Excellent. So that's what I was up to. Uh, Kelly, what about you? Um, so I met, I attended a very important shoot boss meeting for project maple seed on Monday night that Adriel missed. Oh. Have been that important. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, I actually, um, was, um, there's a there was some stuff happening with my family last last week. That's why I wasn't on the show last week either. Um, and then I got um, ill on the weekend, and I spent the whole entire weekend in bed, so I didn't go um, shooting on Sunday. Um, yeah, and I'm still ill. You can probably tell by my voice. Anyways, I uh, spent a couple of hours last night with the ladies from uh, She Shoots. Uh, we're we're looking at uh, doing some really exciting stuff with She Shoots. Um, but also uh, we have a really exciting guest that's coming on next week. So mark your calendars uh, at eight o'clock EST Eastern standard time or six o'clock mountain time. Uh, it's going to be on Tuesday, uh, the 13th. Uh, we're going to have um, um, Vanessa Harup and she's coming on the show. Uh, she's been on, uh, we did a, a ladies symposium she's been on previously she's a big game hunter um but she we're gonna have her on because it'll be the first time she's been on actual she shoots podcast uh but she was down with the safari club international uh their international get together um this um, down in nashville last week but she was uh she was presented with her uh grand slam uh club by this uh award and so what that means was she was able to get all of her different trophies. And so she was able to achieve that. And that's very exciting because not a lot of it, a lot of, a lot of people get to do that. And so she's going to come on and talk about that. She's going to talk about Safari Club International being a hunter. She doesn't really like being called a huntress because she's actually a hunter. And you know what? Shooting, competitive, competitive hunting, shooting, competitive shooting and hunting. Everybody's on a level playing field. That's her philosophy, and that's mine. So we're all hunters yeah. or shooters. Competitive hunters? How do you yeah. competitive hunt? Um, trophy can... size, quantity. Correct. Well, if you're a longtime listener for Slam Fire Radio, everything is competition, including hunting. Mm-hmm. Right. So, yeah. Um, and uh, Sporting Rifles is asking if we have uh, maple seed dates that are posted in Ontario yet. No, not yet, but we're working on them. So we'll get them out there soon. Um, and then, yeah, that's about it. Uh, I did. A, no, I totally lied to you. I did get some stuff that was for the maple seed uh, trailer. I ordered it. And thank you, Amazon, for delivering to the door. So. Nice. Deck, decked it with a few more things. My basement is full of stuff to send out uh, to our instructors. Thank you, instructors. Um, and I'm looking forward to getting it out of my basement and ready. Don't send it until I've sent you this stuff because there's some stuff that you'll have to forward on to the instructors as well. So what you're saying is I need to send you back. And I, I do have my pile of slings that are sitting Broken there. Ones. They're in my yeah. basement. Mm-hmm. So I'll send that to you. And mm-hmm. then you'll send me back the stuff. And yes. then I'll put that in the stuff to send out. 
and then it'll go back. Yes. So what you're saying is I need to get off my tukas and go and send just the broken ones. Them. Just go go to Canadian uh, Canada Post, get one of them prepaid boxes, throw all the broken slings in there, send them my way. And then maybe like three weeks later, you'll get a big old box of fixed slings and all sorts of other random crap. Goodies? Random crap. I prefer. I'm afraid of what's going to be in there besides the random slings. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's also that. <laughs> All right. That's it for me. I did nothing other than talk to people for hours and hours. Talking so, to people. Hmm. What about you over there, Momo? Uh, so I wasn't on last week. So two weekends ago, I went to um, the local club in Montreal, had their Ipsic match. So on the Friday night, I went to go help with the build uh, from the afternoon to evening. Uh, and it was a completely like so they do a monthly match, and this one was completely different in terms of like how smooth the build went, and we were done so much earlier than the the match before. And uh, yeah, I was there on the Friday night, and then I didn't shoot the. Match. They do have squads that shoot on the Friday night, but I I was scheduled for the next day, and I went back the next day, and uh, mm-hmm. and ended up being a lot of fun. And they did um, they had a little twist where. You could you could uh, um, pay an extra five dollars. You didn't have you were enforced to, but you paid an extra five dollars. And one of the stages was a simple like build drill style stage where it was just two shots. You know, so obviously it was uh, uh, for quickness, hit factor, quick hit factor. And uh, can you use that word anymore? Hit factor. I hear that USPSA is uh, is trademarking it. Oh, you need okay, right. to be calling it like points. Points per second. Per second. No. Yeah, points, points per, per second. second. PPS. Yeah. So, yeah. Point P- PPS. Um, so they had done it. And my, my friend Louis was one of the co match directors and he had set it up where um, the money was divided. So by um, by the classes and stuff. So not division, it was by class. So like the GMs, Gs, and As were together. And then the Bs and Cs were grouped together. And then the Cs and uh, it sees T's and unqualified, something like that. And uh and it ended up being like each so each winner, I think there's four winners, and uh they got like a hundred and eight dollars, so it was pretty good. Um, I think I finished for my two groups, I finished I think third or fourth, or um, and I was off by like so I had I had Al- Alpha Charlie and the person who was the best had out two alphas and beat me by 0.03 seconds in terms of time. So it wasn't my best job, but it was pretty good. Um, and overall, the match was just a lot of fun. And then uh, this last weekend was was another Ipsic match at the Lonardier Club in Joliet, Quebec. Uh, it's about an hour, hour and a half from my house. I, I carpooled with Mardig. We generally go to a lot of matches together now. And uh, it was uh, turned out to be a really good match too. And I did uh, talking about like goals and percentage. Like, so for me to be from a C to a B, I have to be in the 60% range. So for production, I actually was in the 60s for this match. Now it all depends too, like who's there, you know, in, in terms of who's at the top or whatever. But I, I shot very well. And one change I made, which I should have done, I should have realized this sooner. Um, I had changed the recoil spring to a much lighter one. I had put an eight pound spring in the tan folio and I think factory is like 14 and my set, my, like my set came from eight to 11, eight, nine, 10, 11. Right. And I had gone too light. So I was, I was noticing some, um, some malfunctions, not too many, but so, just enough mm-hmm. that would just enough that it would mess me up, right? Obviously, the time of clearing and then the time of like readjusting because you know you get frustrated, or whatever. So I put in the eleven pound spring before this match. I didn't test it at all or anything, and the gun ran flawlessly. It was wonderful. So that definitely didn't hold me back. The only let's say mental mistake I made was um, there was a a stage where uh there was a port and you had to uh shoot part of it like you had to pull on a rope to reveal some targets so it kind of forced you either to go strong hand only or to try to you know wrap your hands together to pull the rope down i generally i generally shoot those just strong hand only i don't bother trying to like 
um, hold the rope together with both hands. Anyway, so I, I guess when I went to the lower targets in the array, I kind of touched the bottom of the port. So kind of like leaning on it. And I got two procedurals for that. So that for that, all the rules in IPSEC, that's one I dislike. Uh, yeah, it's yes, yes. But I, I, I mean, IRL, I, like in real life, you'd, you would be like pushing against that kind of stuff. You wouldn't be floating off of it. I know what they're trying to do. It's just, yeah, but they, it's, I guess it's cause it's, um, out of it's out, outside of the fault lines. Yes. So it's, it's uh-huh. so, so that's why it's a procedure. And I didn't argue with it. I mean, I, I broke the rule. I broke the rule. It just, I, I had done really well on that stage. So it, it hurt to get those two procedurals because I think it changed my head. Like, I think it was a difference of 0.5 or something. Cause I played with a calculator. I saw the difference. And, uh, but overall, like I was pretty. Um, so one thing I've really focused on is, making sure because i've i think i was frustrated before about too many mics like i was getting you know one to one and a half per stage and it was they just add up and they kill your time obviously or kill how you well you do and so i'm really focusing on the second shot on target so i'm i'm trying to get it on and not rushing now yeah it it affects my time a bit but my accuracy has gone up considerably now that i'm focused on that second shot and also like making sure I knock down the steel in one shot. I'm getting better at that too. So, um, so yeah, that's something that was definitely a positive just about getting better at that. So that was it for, that was it for that match. There's nothing this weekend, which is good because it's the Super Bowl weekend. Yay, Super Bowl. And, uh, and then the last thing I did was I ordered, I got an Amazon order too. I bought a, uh, little, um, punch set <laughs> with the little mallet was it are they cute oh it is so i bought that just for like um playing around with the like make um cleaning the pistols and things like that um and that's really that's really it for me i'm looking forward there's another match in a couple weekends and that's going to be in the gat in the near gatineau so that'll be good and that's it for me We'll get into upcoming events. I guess Chaz has some uh, three gun dates, uh, March 23rd, April 20th, May 4th, June 2nd, July 6th, August 3rd, September 7th, 8th, October 5th, and November 9th. Awesome. I was chatting along. I was asking you questions, and then I didn't notice that I was muted. <laughs> so. Oh, I'm sorry I didn't hear your question. Go ahead, Kelly. Ask your questions. No, it's okay. It's past. I don't know. I'm like, <laughs> no, I, I could still answer it. It's no, like, I was no just, she's mad at you for not answering in the first place. I didn't, right? close, I didn't close my briefcase to leave. You could still well, ask your question. You can read my mind. Come on. We, we're friends, right? You were going to ask me. No, I was just going to say, I had asked you. You said you had ordered something from Amazon too. And I said, what? Did you order a gun? <coughs> from Amazon, <coughs> Excuse yeah. me. And then I said, wouldn't it be nice if Amazon could you could order a gun from Amazon and deliver it to your door. Uh, yeah, I guess. I, well, we can do that essentially. We just cut. in the in the crappy brown envelope too, not even in a yeah. box. Just leave it, Porch Pirates, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Amazon. Just dump it, take a Ooh. picture, and walk away. Yeah. Um. <laughs> oh, I had a I had a couple other things that I missed. Oh, what? Silly, silly me. So another, I mentioned the goal about the. B class versus C class. And another goal was, or goals for this year was to go to the Na- Ipsic nationals. Right. Right. And they're in Peterborough, Ontario. Yeah. So oh, yeah, that's there's right. Gonna, there's going to be a ton of interest because there's Ontario and Quebec has, has the most shooters, has the yes. most Ipsic shooters. It's just, <laughs> not, it's not Toronto centric. It's just, there's more Ipsic shooters. You know, or the most populous. Most pop. Yeah, yeah, obviously. So, right. um, so Ontario, now I'm not a member of Ontario. I'm a member of Quebec. Ontario opened up their lottery. Yeah. And last time I looked, there was already 230-something people on the lottery. Yeah. And based on the, I was reading the notes in the forum, there's only going to be like 24 or so spots that actually go to the lottery mm-hmm. winners. Yeah. The rest are going to be team members. and yeah. And then obviously based on, on rank, which of course is deserved, right? Right. Um, 
so yeah, so there's going to be, let's say 20 ish spots and there's already over 200 people and it's going to be open another thick week or so. Yeah. So there's probably going to be like 300 plus and you know, only 20 ish people get, get spots now. Well, com- it's the truly a lottery then at that point, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. And um, so that's, or, yeah. or, or you can shoot really well and earn a spot in there by actually shooting really well. And Richard, listening now, says he's, he's one of the two hundred. So good luck, good luck, Richard. I hope you get to go. Um, yeah. yeah, the shooting really well. Well, I'm not going to qualify based on that, but but it, but it'd be fun to go. So, <clears throat> excuse me, if you win a spot, congratulations. I hope you actually yeah. have fun. Um, now, I don't, what? Oh, okay. Now you can ask questions because you're not muted. So go ahead. No, no. Yeah, if you want to continue talking about something, that's fine. I have something else to say. I forgot about something I did, but you can go. Okay. The last and the mm-hmm. last thing I was just going to say. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Now, um, so Quebec hasn't announced their lottery system yet, yet. but I know there's going to be a ton of interest too. So. Yeah, Chris, for a lot of people, yeah, Peterborough is not that close, but it's much closer than going to uh, DC or some DC other place, or, right? yeah, or yeah. Alberta or wherever, right? So, mm. um, yeah, so we'll see what what those numbers look like when the when the time comes. I'm really yeah. close to Peterborough, though. You are, so you could go. Yeah, no, I'm not one of the 200 like Richard is. No, no, you could put you could put your name in. I could. I um, think it'd be yeah. worth it. Um, yeah, it actually would be worth it to go. I'd love to go. Well, yeah. Okay. I, Let me I think th- about it. Okay. I think I'm done now. You can have your second turn. Uh, okay. Thanks. Can I have a second turn too? I, no. Yes. <laughs> of course you could. I forgot. I did go to the range. It wasn't this weekend. Cause I was, as I was said, I was sick, but I did go the week before and I wasn't on last week. So I went back, did some, um, went to the range on the Sunday morning with everybody. We had a great time. Um, did mostly our owing. So yeah, did our owing. It was fun. Oh my gosh. It was a lot, a lot of fun. So that was the extra that I did. Adriel, what did you forget that you did? There's this the thing. band. Yeah. Yeah. This goes like this. And huh. now you have a sling attachment point. Yeah, that's actually... It's for people who want slings. Yeah, like people in Maple Seed shooting yeah. Maple Seed. Yeah, right. I believe they need that kind of stuff. I see. Mm-hmm. At first, when you held it up, I thought it was the Arby's logo. I don't know why, but if you look it up, you'll see. We've got and the it, <laughs> we got the meat. Yeah, we I'm hungry. The... <laughs> Let's move yeah, on. Yeah, looks like it. Well, I don't think I you'd be. Dinner. I don't think you'd be hungry for Arby's. I like their curly fries. You do? Okay. Yeah. All right. Sherwood Park multi gun dates? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sherwood Park multi gun dates. I'll read them off. Uh, March oh 9th, God. April 6th, May yeah. 11th, July 13th, August 10th, mm-hmm. September 21st, and November 2nd. Wait, wait, wait. Someone just emailed me today about ah, three gun in Ontario, Niagara region. Yeah, uh, Niagara does it. Yeah, they emailed me. Uh, Wade emailed me about uh, the three gun.ca to, to get him yeah. on there. He said, We run four or five matches per year out of Niagara region. And for the yeah. past three years, we've been running the Niagara Regional Three Gun <laughs> Championship. Our events are listed on our brand new website, nr3g.ca, or Good on Instagram him. and Facebook. Uh, and uh, yeah, definitely check them out. It's pretty active there, the actually, studio. and they also, they'll they run across the border, too. Oh, that's the other thing. I signed up for an apple seed down in the U.S. Ah. Wait, are we doing in a third round of what we did with guns? Cause sure, why not? I might it's have just, something just never else. Remembering. <laughs> this yeah. like a round table. We'll just like throw out one out each time, and then we'll keep going mm-hmm. and going. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. I think we're done now. I'm done. Anyways. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm mm-hmm. done. Um, okay. okay, so... <laughs> In the news, uh, we have a story from True North uh, that says legal firearms owners are rarely involved in gun homicides. Statistics Canada. Well, I'm going to tell you that in Canada, yes. rarely have gun homicides. All, you, yeah. Okay. 
at all, right? There's yeah, less, there's not really not, many of them. There's less gun homicides in Canada than there is in, I don't know, pick a city in the U.S. Out of the but 113 anyway. homicides involving a firearm, legal firearms owners accounted for 24 incidences. So 20%, give or take. 20%. 80% of them are If I illegal. was the anti-gun lobby, I'd say, that's 20% too many. <laughs> if all the food can only save one life, everyone needs to walk around with airbags all the time. And when they say involving a firearm, does that actually mean the use of a firearm or a firearm was present at the scene mm. when something happened? No, I'm asking questions. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, a cop? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. legal gun owners are twenty. Getting a number was nice because I knew it was low. I didn't know it was twenty percent low. That is uh, exceedingly low, almost to the mm. point where you could argue that it's not worth worrying about. No, it's not worth worrying about. Well, especially when you you, know, you look at like the the overall number. It's just uh, yeah, twenty four, twenty four per year, mm. and that's people like. Yeah, like people slipping, like Tony's mentioning there. There's probably pe- more people slipping. There's probably more people getting struck by lightning. Um, oh, that's interesting. Lightning. There's more deaths. people getting hit by buses. There's more people falling into holes. There's more people <laughs> dying. Uh, only two away. to three people dying of lightning each year. Okay, so okay. kind of surprises me. Hmm. Be lost to C8 and Angus. Do we have that on our, our news? This one? This yeah. this. Military oh, style rifle. It's a C8. Of course, it is. It's not. No, it's not military style. It, it is, is a military. Well, mili- our military uses C8s. So this, yeah. was, so this was stolen. Correct. Ah, it's a police pistol carbine. Okay. I don't know why the cops have firearms designed to kill the most number of people in the shortest, shortest period of time. time. When would yeah. a cop need to do that? Mm. I'm gonna go back to put a brick. Just saying. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, please <laughs> bury watch investigation. Today. What? <laughs> After a military style assault military style assault rifle was stolen from a, they got the assault rifle part. Is it right or wrong? It, it, it wouldn't be full auto anymore, even though it was sent to the cops, they would have made it semi auto only. You would not want cops with a full auto rifle. No. I bet no. you they made this semi-auto. F- so both parts are wrong. It's not military style. It is a military rifle. Correct. And it's not an assault rifle. No. Because it's, it's not a, select fire it's a police, anymore. It's a police pistol carbine. It's a Just police saying. pistol carbine. So not a pistol carbine. It's a it's a carbine. Did I say police pistol Patrol. carbine? Did I say Patrol. that? Patrol. Yeah. Why did I say Patrol. pistol? Because I'm used to saying pistol carbine. GPC. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a patrol Anywho. carbine. That was the thing as well. We as, as oh, well. sorry. I'm just showing all the events in Alberta here from Maple Shut State up. and none in Ontario. <laughs> wow, that's a lot Go of along. events. <laughs> here, you know what? What just happened? Let's have a conversation in December of next year, shall we? About the number of events? Number of events. Who's still doing them? Oh, you're going to win. I know. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Wait, I'm not December, doing as, as many as December 2024 or December 2025? What? You said that next next year? No. Next no next December in December. Okay. In, uh, <coughs> anywho. Okay. What's the next thing? Uh CFET. there's that CFET. CCL Siberian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the Canadian firearms. It's a testing group that I'm a part of. We tested the BCL Siberian. You guys know how well it went. It did go well. Yes. I still got well. people texting me and messaging me saying like theirs is working great. So I think it's like hit and miss on whether it's good or not. But the amount and the variety of failures with it got with this thing and the fact that we had to send it in for a warranty twice uh, seems to suggest to me that uh, maybe the problems are, are more than just, you know, one thing that didn't work on this one. No, it's not good. No. Uh, it's on Reddit and, uh, you know what? I might as well just, uh, paste it into the chat in case anyone wants to get to that. And I will add it to, heck, you know what? I will add it to the show notes as well. Okay. So and, then, right. and then the last thing we had here was USPSA trying to trademark trademark hit factor. 
Okay, that's interesting. So you were you weren't kidding. We can't no, use it factor. Wasn't. Oh no. Yeah, they're they they filed uh papers to try to trademark hit factor. I, I believe because there's so many outlaw uh events that are that are using that that name for, uh, for, for it. You know what? Then you just need to stop. Stop it. But they didn't invent it. Uh, I, I no, was they using didn't. hit factor before USPSA. So, so stop. Interesting. But anyways, if you yeah. if you listen to Ben Stoger, um the current board of directors appears to have some issues in USPSA. They've lost it. Yeah, something like that. Craig <sighs> was just saying uh, a prohib left unattended in Iraq in an unlocked cruiser rather than chain locked in a truck as per their own rules. Yes. Did you guys watch the uh, the lock picking lawyer where he lock picks the lock that's the for the uh, shotguns or rifles inside the cruisers? No. No. It, but I'm it, just going to say that anybody you know locks are easy to get to the people that i know like a magnet and uh it's i won't suggest on how to do it but uh watch the lock picking lawyer on youtube but yeah. still it's probably a little bit more safer or locked or not locked, sorry so a little bit more if it's locked as it's supposed to be in the cruiser and the cruiser is then locked because the th- cop was actually in mm. the cruiser, it wouldn't have been stolen. The cop wasn't in the cruiser, probably getting a donut and a coffee at Timmy's. And whoa, stereotype I'm, much. Wow, I had to hey, the donuts. I'm gonna say this I'm addicted right now to the lava cookies at Tim Hortons, they are delicious. And I will lava actually, cookies. yeah, there's lava cookies, it's like a lava cake, but it's in a cookie form. You have to have them, so I don't. I, any any chance it's low carb? No, it's, it's not low carb, nor is it low sugar. It's chocolate, <laughs> upon chocolate. It's melted and coffee. So right. they were probably in the Tim Hortons coffee. I mean, Tim Hortons um, eating cookies and having a coffee, which I can endorse, but they need to lock their car and they need to lock their um, C8s. Just saying. I bet you he's going to be in trouble. <laughs> Probably. <Yeah. clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. I wonder who stole it. Okay. I'm just saying. I wonder who stole it. Who knows? Yeah. Okay. We'll move on to new gun stuff. Brought to you by Bullseye North. Need a new boomstick? <laughs> Bullseye North and a shooting superstore and a proud supporter of the CCFR with a wide selection of guns and top trending gear for any shooter. Free shipping over $250. Some exclusions apply. They now have $70, $17 flat rate shipping for or, over orders over below. Oh no, sorry. For orders below $250. Subscribe to their new weekly newsletter to get first access to the hottest deals. All right. And what I got from them is they got 50% off hops, nine by 12 storage bags. So if you wanted to store one of your handguns longer term in a dry bag, uh, they've got the hops air vaults for $2.99. <laughs> oh, wow. How mm-hmm. big are those? Nine by 12. Good enough for a pistol. Okay. Just think of like an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, mm-hmm. like that yeah. big. So I handgun. If, I was wondering if they could actually do like... I don't know, six by three. What's bury, that for? Bury people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Just, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you put yours in bags. I prefer, I go bagless. More natural, <laughs> compost. <it's organic. clears throat> Oh, I have to talk to you about something. We can't talk about it on air afterwards. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't want. Wow, that's quite a segue. Sure the there. Recording's turned off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, Bullseye's got those. Uh, if you're I'm buying something else, from them anyways, buy some of those. Right. Right. It's very economical. Yeah. Right. I don't know. About I need bottles, sleep. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Range U has Horny Black 4.6 by 30 millimeter ammo. <clears throat> the kind you'd use for like for an MP7, that kind of thing. 4.6. They got it. I haven't seen that stuff for sale in a million years. So very interesting. Uh, this. Oh, you know what? I am sharing a tab and not my window. Let me try yeah. that again so that you guys can see the whole shebang. Here's the 4.6 ammo. It's not cheap. 
Yeah. 94 bucks for 24, 25 rounds. I guess you could reload that stuff, though. It's so cute. Look at it. This is something I'm looking at. What? CVA Scouts. Oh, they're out of the 4570s. God damn, I should have bought one when they had them. Uh, SFRC has these break action uh, rifles, uh, kind of like your uh, one those old H&Rs or handy rifles and that kind of thing. Right around 500 bucks. Uh, right now they got 44 mag, 243 Winchester, and 44 mag stainless. They had 4570 before. And it was right around this price. And I like I was telling you, like, yeah, I got a bunch of 4570 ammo. I don't know if this is the best platform to shoot it in because it's probably a light as heck. So it's, it would probably like recoil like a monster. But that'd be a fun little like schwack a deer with 4570 and not have to spend 1500 bucks on a lever action rifle. Mm. But now they just got 44 mag left. So my uh, interest is uh, de peaked. It's waned. It has waned. Uh, you guys want to look at some cheap glass? Sure. Uh, Cabela's Covenant AR one to eight. It's a low power variable optic. Comes with a mount. 229. Uh, this is cheap. Uh, I owned one of these. I shot some three gun matches with one of these. I think if you are low on budget, this is well, not if you're low on budget, this is the cheapest LVPO. Hmm. Bar none. Not even yet used. You can't even get a used one for this cheap. Uh, downsides. Yeah, the glass quality isn't the best. Uh, yeah, Cabela's warranty on it is only 60 days, but uh, mm, it will. Uh, it will work for three gun and that kind of thing. Uh, and it is very, very cheap. Speaking of very, very cheap, uh, range view also has some Fioki nine millimeter pistol ammo, 330 bucks per thousand. That's, very close cheap. To, that's close to the cheapest I've seen in a long time. Even uh, at, one, mm -hmm. even at one fifteen. Like, yeah. Yeah. That is, uh, that is cheap. Mm. I would have to add that to my list that uh, that I have here, and maybe I'm doing so uh, as we speak. But uh, yeah, that is very cheap. Prop for River had some uh, large rifle primers, uh, some RWS stuff, if you can believe it. It's all gone, but it's good to see that stuff coming in because I haven't seen long rifle in stock anywhere in the last two years. So that's kind of neat. Uh, <laughs> I like this one. Maybe, possibly a pre-order. Uh, Delask <laughs> is looking at the, possible uh, pre-order. <laughs> like yeah, possible pre-order. You can add it, but maybe. Yeah, maybe okay. it'll work. Maybe not. I don't know. I kind of like the, <laughs> the cut of their jib on this stuff. Uh, two seventy-nine. They're making some shorty ten-inch Duria TM twenty-two barrels, or maybe they will, if enough people pre-order. Maybe it's going to make it real short. Do you have to maybe send the money? How does it? How does it? Uh, I don't know. Possible. They need a minimum of fifty. Okay, so that's what they're saying. They need fifty by. I don't know. A few weeks here. If they get fifty, oh, your payment will be re re refunded if the. Oh well, yeah, it makes sense. Forward. So not they're not, they're not going to steal people's money, right? Mm -hmm. So it's for the barrel only. It does not include installation or gunsmithing of any kind. And if you use the factory handguard, you might need like a linear comp to make it at least clear the forend or use a different forend, I guess. Yeah. I like the, the shorty 22 rifles we're, uh, we're getting here versus the GSG 16, like the, the compact mm -hmm. one that uh, Delas made. They look sick. Uh, and this looks uh, pretty good as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm actually on a Facebook group that I've been at. So I've, I noticed that some of these have been coming out, but the BCL Fox bats are starting to go out to customers. Yeah, it wasn't October 2022. It's uh, February 2024. But uh, yeah, people are getting some of them. Marstar's got some and some of the other ones have them. They got shadow systems barrels in them. Hmm. So the 60 people or so who pre-ordered these are finally getting them. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. And that's all the new gun stuff. I've Getting got. pistols. That's awesome. That they pre-ordered that were supposed to be delivered. Yeah, but still. Uh, like, yeah. Pre-ordered, already paid for everything, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So it's kind of like saying, Haha. at least, at least they are getting them though, because yeah, yeah you're absolutely. Right. <sighs> it was, it was, it was painful seeing the shot. So shot show stuff that we can't buy. And it's like, ugh. well, it's actually most of the shot show stuff. No, right. but in particular, the pistols, right? Like, Which no, well, I, I wanted an H9. What, what did you see that you wanted? The one that I really want is mm -hmm. the, the Walther PDP steel match. Oh, yeah. Like, she is one sexy beast. Like, <laughs> I, oh. And I'm thinking, I think it would end up being like over 2K if, it, if they sold it here, but uh, that's what I would want. Yes. Okay. You know what? Let's let's hope that things can get reversed to the, the next government. Yeah, um, we can actually get one. But that's Maybe. what I would get. Yes. <laughs> we would re we would re not reunite. We would unite you with your. Yeah, I feel like we should be together. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say. Let's make it happen. <laughs> all right. Cool. Okay. That's all the new gun stuff I have. So that's all the new gun stuff. We'll get on to our main topic. And our question or topic for this evening is where do you get cheap ammo in Canada? And uh, by the box at your local gun store, just by the 20, right? Can, can yeah. you tire? Can you tire, right? Yeah. No. Yeah. So, yes. You do this every year, uh, as you indicated in your. Mm -hmm. In your what we did in guns this week. So what did you find out? What's we, um, we love you because you do all the research for us. So yeah, that's that's exactly this is my lazy topic because I've kind of already like done the work. So <laughs> I can, already did the work. <laughs> yeah, I, I okay. can I can do it. And so what did uh, you find? Easy. Tell us. Uh well, here. Let me let me share my thing you do here. Screen. What's with the new background, by the way? I don't know. I okay, must have used it. It's a, yeah, it does look 000. like a Kyle thing. Mm -hmm. mm. Looks cool. It's too well designed. to. So you definitely know it's not me, right? Uh, yeah, so this is the stuff that I look at on a semi-regular basis. You know, a while back, I was I, I had added, added 760 by 25 because it's like the cheapest yep. ammo out there, and I still leave yep. it on there because it's the cheapest pistol centerfire ammo, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, what is good? Um, yeah, you can get non corrosive 760 by 25 for pretty cheap, 30 cents around. Uh, nine millimeter pricing has come down. I feel like uh, you know, last year and and uh, and and two years ago, nine millimeter was still quite expensive. Thirty six yeah. cents for aluminum, forty forty two cents for brass. Yeah. That's all come down now. We're you know thirty four thirty six cents around for brass case, which is really good. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Two two three pricing is uh, is silly. I think yeah, even back. Yeah, the th like so. Two years ago, you could get the uh, steel case, like the Russian stuff. Yep. We had this Russia Ukraine war, and none of that stuff's available anymore. That actually hurt a bunch of the com block uh, ammo here too. That all got more expensive, but yeah, two two three actually came down from from that stuff. Other than the steel case, it, it came down in pricing. Availability. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it came down in pricing. So it comes down in pricing. Mm -hmm. Availability is still there. Yep. Because therefore that's the reason why I came down pricing. It's but blind man. It's blind man. Mm -hmm. Um I'm still I'm still wondering if it'll keep going down. I'm with the UK and still continues. You know what? Um just like waiting and I think I'm going to pull a trigger on solely outdoors has this PMC X tac Yeah. Uh, five, five, six. And I think I'm going to get a thousand of this six seventy nine, 79 right. free shipping. It's the green tip stuff. Ranges love when you shoot their steel with this stuff. They love no. like, yes, steel <laughs> yeah. tip. Please no. bring the green tip. <laughs> shoot up our targets with that. But uh, yeah, I want some, I want some. Yeah. And the x tax stuff is a bit spicier, so it's got a little bit more punch okay. to it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A little bit more. A little bit more. So I think I'm going to pick some of that up. 68 cents isn't bad. It's not... Okay, I don't think we're going to ever get back to 40 cent 223. That's what we had... Uh, what was that? 2021? 2022? When do we get yeah. the real cheap stuff? 21. Maybe 2020. 2020. 40 cents for brass case. 
Like that was incredible. There was no point getting steel at 35 cents when brass was 40 cents around. Yeah. But I don't think we're going to come back to that. This was like, uh, there was like was, panic buying and, and it was before it was just before they, the whole world shut down. So in 2020, just when it's just before. And, yeah. uh, the they had caught up from panic buying during the Obama era. So during the Obama era, yep. all this stuff was like panic bought out the yin yang. They all increased production. And this was kind of getting towards the tail end of that. And there wasn't the panic. And all of a sudden they were sitting on a buttload of yeah. supply. So we saw that 223 get real cheap. Jeez, four years ago. Yeah, it was four. Yep. A while back, a while back. But so I don't think we'll ever see like 40 cents again, but we might see like we're seeing 68. I think it would be realistic that we did. It might get down to like 60 cents. If you, if Russia, Ukraine like stops, we could get down to 60 cents, maybe even 55, like maybe. So I wouldn't feel bad buying it at 68 cents because if all it gets down to is 60 cents, maybe 55, that's not that far off. No. I try not to buy like a whole big quantity of ammo when I think the price is going to come down. Oh, uh, yeah, seven six two by thirty nine. You can still get the cheap stuff. There's still lots of corrosive ammo at twenty eight cents around. That's fine. Uh, it's more than we paid in two thousand eight, for example, but it's still pretty good. Three oh eight. Uh, all our cheap stuff is gone. There was like, there's this Chinese surplus. Even this is, is going a little bit high now. The 90 cents per round is what Lever Arms is selling it for. And that's pickup only. But the problem there is I can get PMC for a buck 20. I'd rather get the PM, like run the PMC than the Chinese surplus stuff. It's steel cased. It uses a super hard primer. I would much rather shoot PMC than Chinese surplus for, what is that? 30 cents, maybe like 30% more. Worth it. Definitely worth it. And then for 762 by 54, oh, that stuff's hard to find now. This yeah. used to be like a lot cheaper to, to shoot than um, a lot of the other stuff out there, but it's it's much more it's much more now. And there's because it's all produced in like Russia and Ukraine and that kind of thing, like all the MFS and uh, like the commercial hunting ammo that you can yep. get for 762 by 54, it's gone. You can't get it. You might be able to get some SMB, but getting the other stuff is a, uh, is a real pain right now. There's uh yeah, it's tough. There's still some corrosive, the Ch the Chinese stuff, Chinese still making some corrosive stuff, but the Chinese do not make uh 762 by 54 hunting ammo. Cause why would they? Mm -hmm. we, ha we have an audience request for you, uh, Adriel to publish the, can you grab averages? That? Richard says, can you graph the averages year by year? Yeah. You know, someone did that for the U S um, but I haven't seen it done for uh, Canada. And you know, this February thing, this is weird because I don't do this on purpose. I think it's just, I get bored over Christmas and then I run out of things to write about. And I think like, oh, maybe I should get some ammo for the year coming up because for some reason, yeah, February, 2024, 2022, 2021, 2020, probably 2016. Yeah. They're all, they're all in there. Yeah. I could make a graph. I could make a graph. In terms of places like to, to buy this stuff, if you're yeah, in right. BC, yeah. Lever Arms is is cheap, but you got to like show up in person. Gotenda mm -hmm. has a lot of the cheapest stuff. Yep. Uh, Solely Outdoors isn't bad. Bullseye North isn't bad. They both got some some options there. Marstar used to have more, but I couldn't find hardly any uh, surplus stuff that they have. Mm. Uh. And then nine millimeter varies. I mean, range view, go tenda, that kind of thing. They all have it. Uh, I would say if you want to avoid like really getting hosed on pricing, don't buy small lots. Um, only one, a little bits at a time. Mm. I know, I know a couple of guys who will buy like four or five boxes of nine millimeter and they're paying through the why? ass on, on price. Yeah. Why? Well, because they're, they don't know that you're supposed to buy it. Uh, all, when it's on sale by the thousand. Yeah. And if you have to, uh, split it with a buddy. Hey, I got a buddy who needs a nine mil. Hey, do you want to split a thousand rounds of nine millimeter? Yeah, sure. Sure. Again, now you why, get that lower cost per round. Why are you, why are you splitting a thousand? I used to do that, but now I shoot so much. That, uh, <laughs> I'm just saying. You know, no need to, no need at all. 
Uh, oh, one thing I didn't mention, which ones are still worth reloading for? I would say 308's worth reloading for. 223 is only barely. You need like some, you need to go progressive, I believe, uh, to start making that worth it. Nine millimeter, you need to go progressive for sure because you're not saving a bunch. No. Uh, you're still saving some though. I think I'm making it for 260 per thousand and it's going for 330, 340 right now. So I'm pr- I'm still saving you know eighty bucks or so per thousand. Mm, cheap ammo. I'm just sending the the list to everyone. Three hundred three British worth reloading. Absolutely. If you can get that Campro uh, bullets for that, the one eighty grain bullets for three hundred three, you can make three hundred three ammo for cheap. And it is hard to get. Uh, it's hard to get a, a decent pricing for factory for that. Uh, 762 by 39, do not reload that. 762 by 54, do not reload that. 762 by 25, <laughs> don't reload that. 308, yeah. And then all your like big stuff. Projectiles are hard to find though. For 303, yeah. If you can get that Campro stuff, it's that, that stuff's great. Um, I thought I saw some projectiles recently here. Where was that? Go to bullets. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find them, but, uh, oh, maybe it was PPU. Maybe it was inner surplus. Inner surplus has some of those, uh, those weirder, uh, like 310 size bullets and that kind of thing. I think they had some cheap 303 bullets. So you still have to reload it. Oh yeah. But the cam pro 303, uh, bullets when you could get them, they were 192 for 500. That is real decent for 303. Sorry, for 500. What is that? 500 divided by carry the zero. 192 divided by 500. 38 cents per bullet for that stuff. That's real. That's that's a, a decent way to save money. Make an ammo for 303. Yeah, anything full power rifles, <laughs> as long as you have the primers, uh, you can you can save a buttload of money on full power rifle rounds. And you you don't need a progressive for it either. You can go single stage and uh, and make cheap ammo, like that Carcano. Uh, I'm making cheap Carcano uh, ammo. Inner Surplus had the <laughs> right size bullets for it, uh, the yes. six five Carcano size, which is kind of weird. Uh, I'm making six five Swede for cheap because I already have six five components for my six five uh, Creedmore, so I'm running that stuff in my Swede more. Mm. And of course, like your really big stuff, 300 Win Mag, uh, 338 Lapua, 450, like all that big stuff, you're reloading that, you're printing money. It saves so much yeah, while, like making that stuff. Any of the Magnums, some of those Magnum rounds, they don't really sell a cheap round for it because they are they got too much power for like a basic bullet to handle it. So if they all come with premium bullets and they cost a fortune. But if you can reload that stuff, well, savings are so good. Uh, what about you guys? Where do you typically buy? Mo, you were saying something interesting just before the show about like, so we, sh- we were showing GoTenda here, but also like I bought stuff from G4C and Soli Outdoors. Yeah, there's uh, and, and in Southern Ontario in the Markham area. Uh, a lot of those stores are in that area. So they're all, and they're within, they're pretty close. So they're pretty, they're competitive with each other. So they, <sighs> You will find the best deals from like I mean amongst them. Mm-hmm, now, yeah. I mean, if you're if Antenda tends to do free shipping, the other ones uh, solely I think does too. A G four C yeah. thing doesn't. But if you're in that area, then and you don't ha- you don't need shipping at all, then that's going to be <laughs> the best the best bet for picking up ammo, right? But mm-hmm. and and then they tend to restock quickly too. You don't find like if they go out of stock. It's not very out of stock. It's not out of stock for very long that I've noticed anyways. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Good deals in Tenda are gone in hours or faster. Sometimes, sometimes they have like so much capacity, like so much that they bring in that you can still get that deal. But yeah, uh, I wouldn't wait more than a day on a good deal. No, no, you can't think about it. You got to order. (laughs) A lot of the times when I'm doing the research for the, what's new in guns for the show, that's what I'm buying at the show because I first posted it. Oh, that looks like a good deal. And then during the show, I'm reviewing it. I'm like, 
that is a good deal. And then I'm punching in my yeah. credit card numbers in the background while you guys are talking about something else. See, and, and whatever, whatever screen. you, whatever you buy, you're always being charged 5% tax, right? <laughs> Obviously in Alberta, you're never getting. Yeah. I'm never getting the other tax. Yeah. See, where, whereas five. with me, I, I have to almost pick and choose what, who I purchase from online because some stores will add the PST for, for Quebec and some will not. So, hmm. And it does. I mean, if you're, you know, it's a three, four, five hundred thousand dollar order, it's gonna, it's gonna add up, right? So. Yep. Yeah. Very quickly. Very quickly. I guess. Uh, yeah. That's. Yeah. There was a couple of uh, things from the the comments. Uh, where was it? They're asking if Kelly is uh, reloading. Reloading. Still reloading twenty eight. No, uh, no, we've tried some actually. I haven't got out to shoot shotgun since I don't know since yeah. November. So I haven't shot any since then. I still have actually quite a bit, but to Kelly, uh, we've reloaded some of it. So, um, yeah, so we have lots of twenty eight. Believe it or not, I have a couple of cases. I brought them cheaper i shop around when i go and buy my ammo I'm, i've been shopping around i want to buy locally though if i can so i bought some in ottawa at um Stittsville ranges uh i bought that's where i bought um my 20 my last things of 28 because they had a ton of it believe it or not um i typically will buy from sfrc or blue bullseye north or um yeah when i'm out and about Contenda has um, small rifle and small pistol primers. Really? Yeah. Look at that. Cool. 120, 129 bucks. Mm. 4570, 250. Oh, that'd be a, a walloper. 4440, Tokrev, Y. 32, <laughs> 32, 380, 308. Man, what a deal. This the Cam Pro is so so affordable. 308, 147 grain. Uh, boat tail full metal jacket 500 per box 139 dollars that's cheap that is good for reloading for a 308 um, yep anyways yeah i would just recommend like out the, everyone out there don't buy in small lots buy big for cheap and uh and yeah, split it with friend if you need. If, if yeah, it costs is. too much, split with a friend. Do group buys. Like I have a signal group of uh, other people in Edmonton who like to buy gun stuff. And every once in a while, someone will be like, hey, I'm buying from this store. And then you can get on there and get free shipping because they're like doing a group buy. They already qualified for the, for the minimum price, right? So we're buying like some of our orders would be like four or five grand. Just a whole bunch of stuff. Community purchase. I like that. It's, uh, oh. I don't like the feeling of that. It sounds like communal, communal. Oh, no, it's like getting oh. together to build a getting together to build a barn or something. It's no. I would pay people. I would pay my neighbors to build the barn. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so no, no building the barn. Just buying ammo together and gun stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's all right. Okay. Um, I guess we're. We're done with this topic. Anything else? Yeah. Should? Russ, Russ was saying powder in eight pound containers is the only way to buy. I agree. Powder in the one pounders is so expensive right now. You get a big, big discount by buying in bulk. And uh, yeah, and, Tony's and, saying, why buy local? If you can just. <laughs> <laughs> we miss, we, we miss this comment from Dustin. I think the best place to get cheap ammo is back in 2018. Correct. Well, if you if you go to that spreadsheet link that I've got, you can all go all the way back to 2008 if you want to take a look at the ammo back then. 27 cents around for 23, <coughs> uh, 13 cents around for 762 by 39, 25 cents around for 762 by 54, 32 cents around for 762 by 51, 20 cents around for nine millimeter, 10 cents around for 762 by 25. Yeah, we had some cheap stuff back then. Twenty cents around for forty-five ACP. So Reloaded, we, mind you. So we need a community time machine. That's correct. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. That, and it does out, it does outpace inflation, right? Some of people were saying like, oh, that's just inflation. No, it's like ammo prices. A lot of those have uh, outpaced inflation. Mm-hmm. Cool. Supply and demand and have a couple of, um, you know, wars going on. There you go. Indeed. Yeah. Okay. We will uh, we will get into listener feedback. Uh, we actually have one email, which I'm going to assign to Kelly. Go ahead, Kelly. Oh, I'm doing emails? Yeah. You want me to read it? Really? Yeah, oh, you'll... you know, I, I haven't even looked at the show notes at all today. So I'm going to go down. Just talk about yourself while I read the emails. Okay, this well, is from James. Oh, my God. It's from yeah. James. Okay. <sighs> Has anybody gone through it yet? Oh, no, they haven't because it's okay. Yeah. I just wanted to say I canceled my Maritime Grammarly subscription because <laughs> I've read a few times and skipped a few emails I sent and made no sense. Well, this one doesn't either, James. <laughs> I'm glad I have evidence I can use in court that will. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Go on now. Give sound, it a try. Sound it out. Ex- Excellent. I don't even accelerate. Sure. Ex- all plausible. I like, I like exliterate. I like exliterate. <laughs> <laughs> because what the hell is that? Give up the good work. Seriously, that's what it says. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. That was an excellent read. Can, who? What is that word? Exonerate. Oh, exonerate. No. But that's uh, not how it's spelled. Uh, it's spelled exliterate. But maybe it's exonerate. Oh, well, but because you, liter- your reading's no good. Or your writing's no good. Anyways, James, we miss you. And thank you for sending this in. Grammarly is also spelled wrong, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the beauty of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I d- I'll attempt the word, but I have no idea what it is. I don't you know, exoner. Okay. No, I don't think it might be that either. So no, I don't think so either. I have no idea what the word he was trying to do. Yes. So. Exterminate. No. Uh, you guys are overthinking this. I know, right. My brain hurts. We shall. We on. shall move on. Uh, we have our YouTube comments. Uh, Angel, are you doing them? Or are we going to skip them this week? No, I can do those. Just give me two shakes of a lamb's tail to uh, to pull like them up. That. I'm bringing that back, by the way. I love that. I like, you bring like in the, the sexy back of the lamb's tail and a shake. <laughs> it's very soothing it's quick. to watch lamb. You, you, you bitch at me for saying kettle of a fish. Lamb shake, two shakes of a lamb's tail. Yeah, or two How shakes of a cat's tail. It's I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not near an ocean here, Kelly. So these fish-based <laughs> analogies are just not going to work for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, comment number one from Eddie. He's saying the Browning morale from an article I read is a straight pull version of the of their BAR. It's geared towards the more ever more restricting European market. If it's a BAR, it's the most fucking expensive BAR you can find because a BAR is like fifteen hundred bucks. It's not whatever those things were. Uh, perhaps safeties on lever rifles are to appease California's authoritarian regime. I heard they don't allow pistols without a safety, so it might not be that much of a stretch to assume the same for pist- for rifles. Yeah, I, I believe that's um, pretty similar as well. Uh, we have a, cr- a comment from Chris here. Air tags and restraining orders for the win. Yeah, that one just went up recently here. And that's all the comments from this week. Okay. Uh, if you'd... Uh- Check out our website, slamfireradio.com. You'll find uh, Cabela's and Browning, Brownell's links on there. If Imagine you if use, it was Browning. Uh, or Browning, <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Brownell's, Brownell's. Yeah. Um, and if you use those links to make a purchase, uh, it'll help support the show, which we appreciate. And we will read off the purchases uh, once a month, which we're not going to do tonight, right? No, right. I should have put it in though, because I think we're due. If you also, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so through Patreon and Player. If you'd like to email the show and have us read it live, you can at slamfireradio at gmail.com. And uh, we'll get into shout outs. Any shout outs, anyone? Anyone? 
Well, I got a shout out to Darren for helping spread the word about my PAL courses. Thank you very yeah. much. I'm going to give Adriel a shout out for, uh, you know, coordinating that meeting and not attending. <laughs> <laughs> it came up in my calendar. I'm like, oh, yeah, I should post on the Facebook group to remind everyone and remind myself. And I forgot. That's uh, nice story. Yeah. Did him not appear, appear, bring the rest of you closer together? Was that maybe his motive? And their hate for, for me. for Yeah, you, you bonded with. Up. Yeah, yeah. That would be super clever of him to do. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Give me the credit. Thank you. You're most welcome. Um, Kelly? No, you already went. Adrian? I already went. Yeah. No, I, I just want to say thanks to you guys. That's all. You guys are awesome. And my dog. My dog for actually making me crazy. <laughs> crazy year. I need to go to bed. Sorry. I'm just tired. <laughs> and uh <laughs> I have no shout outs this evening. And Kelly needs to go, so we have to wrap this up. Okay. <laughs> Join us on our Discord server. Watch us on Facebook, YouTube, and play her. Join the CCFR, which is really, really important. And they have a new contest, which we didn't mention tonight, but we oh. will we will next week. Why don't we put it in our um you know, in the news section. Yes. So and, uh, and just talk about it every week until it's done. Okay. So I'll just tease that. <coughs> there is a new contest. Check it out. And we will talk about it next week and going forward until it happens. It's pretty, pretty okay. exciting. Yeah. Right. $10,000 worth of stuff and you get to fly. Okay. To Calgary. You, you've teased enough. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's just enough. Uh, just a little. Fine. Just a, just a tickle for now. Okay. Uh, so we talked about the CCFR and the last thing was see you next week Bye everyone Bye. Bye everyone so if you have any comments or questions for the show please send an email to slamfireradio at gmail.com now go grab a gun and shoot something when the talking is over it's time to get a gun